for conversations or like podcasts, it's like, what do you do? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> trust me, bro. I'm here. I'm your guide. So don't worry about it. You ready to just hop into it? Let's go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the AO Chill Podcast. You already know the deal. June in Jersey. Today I got for you a special guest. I don't think he needs any introduction. My boy, please go ahead. Take a couple seconds, minutes. Let the people know who you are. What's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Nitty B. I'm a hip-hop artist from Jersey. Um, I make a lot of like melodic music, like Roddy Rich, Internet Money type style. And then, but I came up off of rap, so I also, you know, I definitely make rap records and you know get on drill beats from time to time too. Sweet dude, sweet dude. So I think we're just gonna hop right into. Tell me originally where you're from, and uh, tell me about the place that you grew up. Word. So I, uh, I mean, I was born in New York, but. I moved when I was like three, Word. so I know New York is going to get mad if I ever claim that, so I can't, <laughs> but, <laughs> so I don't, but uh -huh. I was born in New York. I came here when I was like three in Jersey, mm. and I've been in like from Central Jersey pretty much my whole life, Word. grew up there, everything, went through all my school there, and then college, I went to Philly for a couple of years, and then I came... Um, yeah, pretty much just came back here. I went to New York for a year, but now I'm back. Word. So where in Central Jersey exactly did you grow up in? Like right by like Freehold? Oh, right by Freehold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's actually, uh, there's a farm out there in Freehold. Not not a farm. It's like a marketplace, I think. Oh, the, um, um like the... Battleview, Battleview, uh, Battleview Orchards. There's also the, mm. um. It's like the flea market, right? Not oh there is a free market down there as well around but, that area, um, yeah there's Battleview Orchards and it's kind of, I think it's in Freehold or next to Freehold mm -hmm. and then there's another one that's right next to Battleview that's uh it's a German one I forget what it's called it, so like orchards they like pies. they sell like exactly yeah, yeah, they yeah. Sell pies another one's like a whole like apple picking place too and yeah like they, have, they have like a farm there and stuff yeah dude Freehold's a cool place Freehold's a cool place yeah. there's not a lot to do there's a lot of like you know open roads and stuff but like that's a, that's how that's another part of Jersey it's a beautiful part of Jersey for sure yeah I mean. I like it especially because it's like it's right in the middle of everything like mm -hmm. you can hop on a bus get to the city in like less than an hour or you can go down to the shore you can go to philly in like an hour and a half mm -hmm. i mean philly's kind of far but like you know it's like closer than north jersey yeah so yeah, yeah. for sure and you said you went to uh study in philly for a bit yeah so i went to philly i went to university of sciences usp oh okay but they just changed their name to st joe's but usp all day and then oh, uh man. yeah i went there for six years for pharmacy Oh no way! Shit. Yeah, so. you know, it's, uh, I have a, I have a separate love for Philly. My boy, mm -hmm. shout out Bobby. He went to a uh, University of the Arts, uh -huh. and he had an apartment that was like a couple blocks away from uh, what's that main street in Philly that everybody goes to? Broad Street. Broad Street. It was yeah, like just yeah. a couple blocks away from Broad Street, man. Mm -hmm. And we'd be going, bro. I think I started going there like my sophomore junior year of college yeah. and i'd be going down like every other month dude just going mm -hmm. down there sleeping in his apartment and shit yeah. philly's a beautiful place man i love it so you spent mad time there yeah dude yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's crazy it's dope down there and actually i'm gonna be going down there at the end of this month where like a little like i guess like vacation vacation i guess you would call it i don't know yeah. if you call it vacation <laughs> mini like, trip mini trip mini trip yeah. i guess you know what i mean because you could you could go to philly and come back like in a day and it wouldn't be that big of a deal yeah for sure yeah. um but yeah so you studied uh phar pharmacy Pharma pharmacy yeah where were so how, how did that work did you get into like are you still doing that today or yeah i mean that's what's supporting the music right now word i got you but the goal is eventually you know obviously do music full-time but that's i've been doing that since i graduated word um, word, word and how'd you yeah. get into that was it just like is that a side passion that you have or is it kind of just like just trying to pay the bills I mean, there's there's a bunch of pharmacists in my family, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, word. Yeah, so I have, like, a bunch of pharmacists in my family, and I kind of just, you know, um, I, I learned the path through them, and I've, I see it happen, and I'm like, all right. And then, you know, my parents also saw the path, so they all, like, they all kind of guided me, and they were like, all right, this is, you know, if this is what you want to do. And it's it, it was like, you know, I just feel like it was a lot of security at the time. Word. It was just, you know, that was a secure spot. Um do it and most likely you'll get a job when you get out don't worry about it and that's kind of why i went for it but i mean it's not like i regret it or anything Weird. it's just like i'm happy i did it and i'm happy what came with it and what is coming with it right now but it's definitely not like what i plan on doing in a couple of years or not you know as soon as it happens you know word no yeah for yeah. sure so you said your whole family is uh pharmacists 
Or like, yeah. you know, are, you, are both of your parents like pharmacists or? No, nah, my sister. And oh, then yeah. uh, my cousins, like two, three cousins. Oh, wait, that's what's up. That's, that's cool yeah. to have like a family. My my family is actually all teachers. Oh, really? My cousins <laughs> are teachers. My parents are teachers. You never wanted to do it? I, I actually went to school. That's what I started <laughs> out school with. I, I was, uh, I started school to become a music teacher. Mm-hmm. But then like my first year in, I kind of discovered what sound engineering was. Mm-hmm. And then I was like. No, nah, I want to chase my dreams. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, uh, but luckily enough in my position, like I had a scholarship going into school. Nice. So like I was just like, and I, but I had a scholarship specifically for teaching. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> when I switched, they were kind of like, yo, what the fuck? Man? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, shit happens. I mean, I was still in the music program, so they can't be that bad. But. Yeah. They didn't get, they took it all away? No, no, no. I don't think they could. You know what I mean? Cause it yeah. was like a, it was a scholarship for music and I was like, I'm still doing music, just yeah. not teaching. Different type of music. Yeah. yeah Cause teaching is the fucking whole world world of drama and stuff you know like yeah especially with the politics not politics but like the inner school politics is what i mean mm. like you know with teachers and it's like a whole bunch of bullshit yeah but um so tell me is there anybody in your music who's uh anybody in your music anybody in your family who's uh musically inclined not i, I hope no <laughs> there isn't and they don't <laughs> listen to this but i don't think there is mm-hmm. uh i feel like no, I feel like just like I just really got into music with like my cousins definitely put me on to a lot of stuff. My sister and just like the radio. But like right. those three are like my three influences from like, you know, zero to 12 or 10 or whatever. Word. So when did you start your music journey then? I mean, like, I, you know, it's crazy because I think like I always knew inside that I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's like it, it was always like because when I was like seven or something. I remember I aming my cousin and I was like, yo, I'm gonna be a rapper. Seven years old or something like that. We were just like on an aim. You remember AIM? Yeah, 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 of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so we're on AIM and I messaged him and I'm like, yo, what'd I say? Uh, I think my first rap ever was something like, uh, even though I'm just a kid, I'm gonna make it big. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And I wrote that and I was so proud of it for like a week or two. And I was just like, yo, I'm gonna be a rapper. And I don't know what happened. Then a couple years, like I just forgot about it. I guess like you're a kid, you forget about it. And I just. A couple years later, like, me and my friends started writing raps, like, in the basement. And then I think, like, that was in middle school, and I started writing raps for, like, projects and stuff, too. And then high school, we started, still, I still did it for projects, and then I did it with my friends. Like, every year, we would write a song, and, like, all my friends would be like, all right, yo, we picked the beat. And then he'd write all the lyrics for all of us. Mm. I'm just like, yo. (laughs) That's sick, though. That's sick. (laughs) Yeah, but I love them. But, yeah, I, like, we stayed up all night just writing and recording, and, yeah. So what was the first time where you, like, uh, even performed anything? I think, like, actual performance was not until college. Because college is when I started taking it a little more seriously. Word. Not as serious as I am now, but, like, that was my first step. I'm like, all right, I definitely want to do this. I just, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm going to do this. So probably there, it was, like, Big Man on Campus. That was, like, the name of the event. And then there was, like, a talent part. There was, a you know, like, a, you know... What do they call that in like the pageant shows when they, they talk to the girls or whatever? It's like the speech part or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like a question answer, my bad. Mm-hmm. So question and answer part, like a talent part and something else. And I bombed everything. But the talent mm-hmm. part, everyone was cheering for me. And sick. that was like my first performance ever. Sick, 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 dude. So yeah. uh, what is like, so when you started, who were like people that you were looking up to when you were like starting to get into rapping? Um, In terms of like artists or like people around me? I guess both, yeah. I mean like, I didn't really have anybody around me that was also doing music. I just, like, I think, you know, once I got introduced to, like, Eminem, that was, like, a huge turning point in, like, my brain. I was like, yo, this is this is so sick. Like, I want to do this. And I think, like, the second point was probably Lil Wayne. And both of them were just, like, in, like, combination. We're like, all right, like, you definitely want to do this. You got to figure it out. So those are, like, my top two influences. But that was, like... That was early, early on. And obviously, like, the radio. I was, like, super... I Like, I know all the radio hits from, like, 2000 on now. Like, I'm just, like, I was so into the radio. And then, whether it's, like, rap or pop or, you know, uh, like, pop punk or whatever. All that. Sick, dude. Sick. So, talk to me a little bit about... Because, you know, you're also... Do you produce all your own videos or... No, nah, I wish, dude. I um I have a videographer. Shout out Contrast Media. He's been, I've been working with him for like three or four years now. And he's like, he's my video guy. I think in the beginning, I tried making my own videos because you know Russ, obviously, right? Yeah. So how he's like, you know, do it yourself, do everything yourself, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. And I tried to learn everything. I did end up learning mixing and mastering, but 
I tried to make my own videos. I don't know if the one I have is still up because it was so bad, but it was. I just put the tripod up, and then I would go in different spots, and it would be very obvious that I'm the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, all right, dude, there's no motion in these videos. And then I would just edit them myself and put them up like, you know, that's the best video ever, and it, not even close. So, yeah, in the beginning I tried, but, you know, I, you can't keep up with that. So I have a videographer now that does everything. Word, word, dude. So when you started out, like, when was the turning point for when you decided, hey, I'm going to take this serious? I think it had to be college because um, it was like second year in college, I remember. And like, I think I was taking a summer class to like get ahead of my next semester because it was like supposed to be like the hardest class. I'm like, all right, let me just take care of it. And it was so like fucking hard. I'm like sitting there and I'm like, yo, why am I even doing this? And I think that's when it hit me, like, I, not that I don't want to do pharmacy necessarily, but, like, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, it was just, like, I knew I wanted to do music. That's what I knew for sure. And I called my dad, and I'm like, Dad, like, I think I'm just going to stop, like, all of this. Like, I just, you know, I just want to do music. And he didn't even really try to talk me out of it. He just tried to talk me into thinking a little more. And he was just like, listen, like, you know, it's not like you drop out now and you're going to be a rapper next week, you know, like, and on top of that, you have no money. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure if you said that, but that was a big point that was probably going <laughs> to hit. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, and like uh, he was just like, listen, you know, it's it's a, it takes time. This at least, you know, you finish this, then you do whatever you want, you know, like at least like whatever happens, happens. You just do whatever you want. It's going to take a lot of time. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let me just finish this. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm just going to go for music, like 100%. But that was like the point. I was like, all right, no matter what. like, And that's, I think, when I started putting out music on like, um, just like YouTube and SoundCloud and stuff. Word. So, you know, you talk about your parents. Like, what was your parents' reactions to when you like really started putting stuff out? They're super supportive. I think they've been to like majority of like the shows I've had. That's great. They've like, yeah, they're, they're really, really supportive with like everything. And... I feel like that's not as common as I wish it was with like a lot of kids and, but they really do support me on everything. And they like, I don't know, like they, they I have a studio like in my parents' house, like in the basement mm -hmm. and like, it's, you know, they like let me use that room for whatever. And they like, let me dedicate. They don't even care. Do they, they're very, very supportive. They come to everything. They like and comment on everything. Like they, they're really about it. That's sick. That's sick. It's it's because it's always tough. I always have different artists here, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it's always a big thing when it's like you know, money, life choices, and then being an artist, and and you know, like it's it's the hardest thing to do because you're literally just putting your love and your passion in, into what you do, and then you, there's no there's no immediate monetary gains from what we do. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been running this podcast now from the studio for the past couple months mm -hmm. and uh, I quit all my jobs back in January, hey, but, um, <laughs> I have not made a dime so far on the podcast, you know, so mm -hmm. we're working, we're working on life savings and we're working on, uh, on, um, you know, side hustles, you know, I still mm -hmm. do it. I still go and cut lawns and I still, you know, go yeah. and refurbish houses and you can get do it. favors, moving, you know, furniture for people and just like, mm -hmm. you know, charging them cash. Shout out, shout yeah. out the IRS, bro. Come get me. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do to support your dreams. And, and it's always great when you have a, a, a good basis and, and family to support you. I think that's one of the biggest things that I feel like, like you said, is missing from a lot of other people who are doing stuff because it's hard hard especially for parents who don't understand you know so yeah. are your parents originally from this country or did they immigrate here they immigrated but i was just going to touch up real quick on what Word. you said like it's you know i feel like the like you know to be able to quit your job and stuff like that I, I, you know that whole essence of of having your back against the wall is like i feel like it really makes a difference you know sometimes i think about that too and i'm like damn like is my back against the wall I don't know. Like, I'm still working really hard, but would I be working even harder, you know, if I, like, mm. I had nothing behind me? And, like, I feel like that's especially, like, this seems to be coming along great. And, I appreciate it, you dude. know, like, I've seen, I, I was watching some of your videos last night, like, the podcast. I was watching one with uh, Scar. Word. And then, um, you know, it just, like, it, it keeps looking like everything's leveling up, and I feel like 
part of that, I mean, you would know more than me, but I feel like part of that might be because like your back is against the wall. Yeah, no, for mm-hmm. sure. I think when you decide to make the shift from this is I'm going to try to make this work and do it on the side mm-hmm. to no, this is what I do. There is nothing else. It completely changes the game. Mm -hmm. And it also, like, changes the game in the sense of the amount of things that you're allowed to go, uh, like, you're allowed to pursue. And by allowed to pursue, I mean, like, just the time and energy that you actually put into it you know when i was working my other jobs before Mm -hmm. it wasn't like there wasn't a hustle it was like because like you know but i would have to work a lot and i I was saving up money to do this and i think that's kind of a difference than what other people might do a lot of people they work and then they're like they're 50 percent of the time is working and then the other 50 percent is like you know what they love to do Mm -hmm. and that's that's hard to do because it's like damn it's like when you have that evenness i almost not i I think longevity wise it's going to end up working out you know but like if you're only putting 50 percent of your time into it it's like fuck it's like you know you want to see it grow faster or you want to put more time into it and that's how you see like you know more exponential growth rather than like you know linear growth right um and uh you know i it was hard to go from you know that and then scheduling people and then having someone else tell me what i had to do was the hardest part you know yeah. asking it's because it, it's basically asking another person at least in my eyes it was asking another person to be like hey can i shoot this podcast this weekend really? or do i have to come to work mm-hmm. and then working for somebody else who doesn't respect you i think that's another thing that changed for me i used to work at a job that i loved mm-hmm. um i worked at a cinnabon in in in, in the nice. Book mall bro yeah in uh, wayne and i love that job i always shout them out on a podcast mm-hmm. love the whole cine crew man nice. like they, they were great and it felt like a family there and to be honest if i was still working there i'd probably the studio probably wouldn't have happened because i would stay 50 50 the whole time mm-hmm. you know um but uh, I ended up leaving there after COVID, and then I got a job, and I got a boss who I didn't like, so I was like, fuck. And mm-hmm. then I left that job, and I had another boss who I'm okay with, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're chill. Like, I, I, Shout I, out, I, Reggie. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> 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 you know? I, I like it, but, like, you know, it's it, it like it made me just realize, I was like, fuck, like, I can't put my time into this, mm-hmm. you know? And when I quit all my jobs, it was like fuck. Like, now it's like I, this June in Jersey project. Mm-hmm. I mean, for example, I'm doing, like, 12 to 15 hour days like every day sheesh you know yeah. and mm-hmm. it's like i come i wake up i come here uh, i like before i go to sleep i'm uploading stuff or if i'm not doing that i'm editing and in between like the only time i've really had to break and kind of breathe is when i eat yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm eating and i, I take yeah. like an hour break but then it's boom right back so for sure like i think that's a great analysis sorry i went on there kind of a rant but no no, no. Podcast. it's, it's important do. no i, I get you i get you though yeah. so tell me a little bit about um your parents then like they they, they immigrated to this country you said yeah, yeah so they're from india Where? um they came here in like the 80s and then uh yeah and then my sister was born and then i was born but they they're like i don't know super in tune with you know american culture and my bad. I feel like I keep going in and out. No, but. you're good. You're good. So, um, but yeah, they they like know what's going on. They understand like, you know, everything I'm doing. They kind of mm-hmm. get it. That's, that's it. I think that's also why they're probably more supportive because they understand mm-hmm. it. They have like you know, they may have not had anyone else in their family try something like that. Yeah. But they understand it and they're very like well versed with everything that's going on in American culture. So they're like they're pretty Americanized. Sweet, sweet. Mm-hmm. No, that that's always good having having like a balance. So, have you ever gone uh, to India to visit or at, at at any point? Yeah, I've been twice. I've been uh in, when I was like in 6th grade and then I went back in like 2017. So then like yeah, so I went like two times. And then it's you know, it's it's definitely like a big culture shock, especially just because I don't know Hindi. I can't speak Hindi. Can't speak Punjabi. So I'm Punjabi. Mm-hmm. Um, you, do you know Punjab? It's um, like a, a part of India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know Punjabi. I don't know Hindi. And so, like, I go there and, like, I really am a foreigner. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't really converse with anybody. I have so much family there. And I try to, like, you know, like, they know English, you know, enough. And, like, sometimes they know English pretty well. But they, like, you know, I... I know that I'm still an outsider kind of thing, Mm -hmm. but I definitely enjoy going there. I love like, I love seeing them, at least seeing my family, seeing like the, I mean, experiencing like the food and like the areas and super hot, but you know, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's dope. I like going back, but I just wish that like, 
you know, I think I've told myself so many years, I'm like, yo, I'm going to learn Hindi. I'm going to learn Hindi. And I haven't, but you know, I know that things will be better once I do. Listen, yeah. if you ever need anybody to push you on that, dude, trust me, it's never too late to learn a language, dude. Yeah. I, I love, love, love learning different languages, man. Um, I know a little bit of Turkish because I used to talk to this Turkish girl. Mm. Uh, I have a bunch of Polish friends. I call them the Polish gang. <laughs> Shout out the Polish gang. Hey. Um, and I'm learning a little bit of uh, Polish through them. Mm -hmm. Like, Jean uh, Dobre means, like, good morning and, like, like good day, basically. Oh. Um I know a bunch of curse words in Polish. But I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you sit and suffer through that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dude. And actually, I just got Rosetta Stone with my boy, mm -hmm. and like, I'm trying to. I'm gonna be officiating his wedding, uh -huh. and so his since his whole family is Polish, I want to surprise them by oh, doing a part shit. of the like you know the whole wedding in Polish. Okay. So like, dude, he know? would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta give yourself like little goals to push yourself. You know. Mm -hmm. And at the end of when you do that. Mm -hmm. Like, and you set that goal and you try to go for it, like, it changes the game. Mm -hmm. And especially if you give yourself the resources and the tools to do it, mm -hmm. you know, like, even for example, you're talking about like kind of mixing in with, you know, leaving your job and being able to, like, you know, pursue your 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 love full time you know it's like i gave my I, I try to spend my money in the way where like i could give myself just the right amount of tools mm -hmm. to like level up and then go ahead and do it and then set these goals like you know in june in jersey it's like 30 podcasts in 30 days you know and doing something creative like that you know and mm -hmm. holding myself accountable and sometimes it's interesting i think this is a good segue um holding yourself accountable in front of a social media audience mm -hmm. you know yeah and you, when you do that and especially holding yourself accountable in that way and you know when you have people who actually start fucking with your you know your music and and you and everything that you do and then when you fail them it's like ah oh, shit you yeah, know what yeah. i mean and then when they don't come back you can't be can't be mad you can't be like mm -hmm. you know you might lose people so yeah. talk to me a little bit about your social media presence because i know like you, you you're really into tiktok you're really into youtube i know you've you've posted up vlogs when you were in new york city mm -hmm. like when did that start becoming like more of a like personality thing for you? I think like it's, I'm still working on it, you know, like all the time. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's never, I, I never feel like a hundred percent at all times. It's definitely, it's like, there's definitely some days where I'm like going super hard, you know, like being able to like be on camera and, you know, just like film myself here, do this, blah, blah, blah. And then some days I'm just like, dude, I, I just don't want to be in front of the camera. I don't want to like, but I think, um, probably in 2020, because that's when I first got on TikTok. And that was when I, like, you know, I started going super hard. Um, got, like, a bunch of followers on there. And, like, I've been kind of climbing and climbing the last, like, couple of years. And I think as soon as I kind of learned TikTok, because TikTok, you got to, like, you got to be in front of the camera all the time. Like, it's, it's all you, you know? Like, definitely videos that do better are ones with you on it instead of, like, the scenery or whatever. Um, so I kind of learned to be on camera. And I think, like... I started learning how to like just develop relationships on social media. And I think that translated through on, um, through Instagram as well. Like my followers have been going up and like, I am sort of building a community in a, community in a way, which I know, like I've watched so many videos. I'm like, that's like the goal. And that's kind of what I think people want anyway, you know, like your fans and stuff or, or supporters or whatever, like that's your community. You know, like, you call them whatever you want to call them. But, like, that's, like, your team, kind of. That's the team backing you. And, like, you want to support them, too, you know, in whatever way you can. That's why when artists give back to their supporters or whatever, it's, you know, it's, like, an even exchange. It's, like, you've done so much for me. I want to do so much for you kind of thing. And, like, I think I've, I've kind of, like, learned how to build that community. And it's been translated on different platforms. Word. So what are the main platforms that you focus on right now? I think uh, TikTok and Instagram are probably my biggest two. Um, YouTube is like, it's tough because, you know, I, I'd like doing those vlogs when I was in the city, but editing, dude, like if I'm trying to do everything, mm. editing vlogs is like, oh my God, it takes me all day. And I'm like, the entire day is gone for one vlog and I got to go out for a day to film the whole vlog. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, but you know, a lot of other things are a lot more fast, fast content. TikTok is a lot faster. Instagram, I feel like sometimes you don't even need to post a video. You can post a picture, stuff like that. So probably those two. Yeah, for sure. So where where have you seen the most success between Instagram and TikTok? TikTok, for sure. I'm at like 116,000 followers right now, which is like crazy to me. As soon as I hit like 10,000, I'm like, yo, this is wild. And, you know, and like it just 
it, it just slowly getting bigger. I think because I was on it early, uh, especially because of Gary V. Like, I definitely listen to Gary V a lot. Oh, hell yeah, me too, man. Yeah. <laughs> I have his book in my office right now. Oh, dude, there you go, yeah. yeah. So he's, like, he's definitely a reason that I started really early on, uh, one of the reasons. And, like, I think that's... <laughs> Dude, what was the question? Uh, what, <laughs> I'm sorry. What platform you found the most success on? And you're talking about how in TikTok you were finding it, especially since uh, you were on it early because of Gary Vee. Right, right. So, yeah, I think TikTok for sure. Um, I've seen the most success on that. And I think it's, you know, pe- people have come over to Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. And it has also, like, gone into my Spotify. I've had a few songs that did really well on TikTok that, like, that gave me a bunch of streams on Spotify and Apple Music and everything. Um, but, yeah, I think TikTok for sure. So was when you started getting followers on TikTok, was it like a gradual climb or did you have like spurts in between where you were getting a bunch of followers? I think there were, it was kind of both. Um, there was definitely like days that I would get like 20, 30 followers and there'd be days where I got like over a thousand followers. That's so it's, sick. yeah. And it was like, I mean, I was definitely, I had, um, I had a lot of, not a lot, but I had a good amount of like viral videos and viral in the sense, probably like 50 K, uh, views plus. Yeah. And then, um, you know, every time that would happen, I would get probably a couple hundred to a thousand and that would, it wouldn't all happen one day because they, they really spread your stuff out for a few days. So I would get like. I don't know, 300, then 200, then 100, like in three days in a row. And like, that's 600 right there. So, you know, it's like every time I would post and that would happen, I would get those big spurts. But then there would be days where I don't get a viral video for like a week or two or like maybe even like three weeks. And it would just be like a slow, slow climb. But, you know, that's how it was. So, um, Feel free, because there's there's stuff that I, I've seen in your TikToks and uh, Instagrams and, and YouTubes and vlogs and stories. Um, there's the one TikTok that you have pinned up of a mm-hmm. song you wrote, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was like, um, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about it, we could talk about it. But if you don't, we don't have to. So like, nah, man, it's, it's cool. Um, yeah. So you're talking about Remember, right? I believe so. It was like you said, your, your best friend. Um, talk to you like i think talk to your girl and then they ended up like getting hitched together yeah so that's that's you know that's pretty much the story but it was i mean the timeline was a lot longer than you know right then and there but um i don't i don't even think like you know like i don't need to hear any drama of the story but i'm more interested in like how it was the process of making the song was Mm -hmm. and like the storytelling behind it yeah so i mean basically yeah that was like my first girlfriend in college, like first real girlfriend. Yeah. And then um, we ended up breaking up and it was like, I think that was like, I don't know. I feel like that was like the first time I ever really experienced like a real like depression. Yeah. And it was just, you know, it hit me so hard because I just wasn't ready for it. And like, I think that's like, you know, it's growing pains. Everyone kind of goes through it, but it just hit me super hard and like, I'm like in a super, I'm a super emotional dude, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it just like, it really affected me. And, um, you know, I think eventually when she ended up getting with someone I knew, it kind of, it hurt me even more. It was like twisting the knife, you know what I mean? And it just, I think that was like, I knew that was probably going to be my lowest point in, in, I don't know, life or like at that time life. And it always like sat in the back of my head and I think I tried writing about it several times, but it just wasn't where I wanted it to be. It didn't sound authentic or it didn't, it felt almost forced or like, you know, and then one night it was just, it was a really, really, it was super late. I think, I think maybe like 12 or 1 AM or something. Not super, I guess that's not super late. Maybe 2 AM. I don't know. It was really late, but I was in the studio and I played whatever beats that one came on and I'm like, it just, you know, I'm sure like artists have said this to you before too, like how the beat kind of speaks to you. Yeah. So, you know, I heard the beat and immediately like those emotions triggered up and I started writing about it and got like super emotional and I'm like writing and recording and I don't usually even record the night that I write because it's, um, 
you know, I just like, I don't like the way my voice sounds or like, you know, I'm like, I took out so much energy writing it. I, my energy recording is not the same. It's not, it's not as good, but I was like so into it. I think I recorded it that night, wrote it, everything. And it just, I was so like happy about it. Cause I felt like it was a big release for me. I like, I let it all out. Um, and I know that people can relate to it too, you know, like whether it's on a specific scale or a broader scale, people can definitely relate to something like that. It's a breakup. You know, everyone goes through that. A lot of people do. And I just felt like, I don't know that at that time I was like, wow, this is like my, one of my most personal songs, my, one of my best songs to me. And I was really proud of it. No. Yeah, for sure. And I think sometimes it's that, it's that visceral connection that you release through your music that I think really touches the hearts of people. You know, um, funny enough, because I brought it up because I actually have a breakup song. Yeah. It's like the only song I ever released um, under Beth, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I work on other Wait, music. You, you rap or sing? Yeah, dude. I do both. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, okay, yeah okay. dude. I actually was part of a boy band. It was called Melting Mindset. Mm-hmm. And we had like a Brock Hampton type of vibe. Nice. And okay. I, I mostly sing, mm-hmm. if anything. Uh, rapping, I don't know. I consider myself more of a poet rather than a rapper. But I can spit mm-hmm. a few bars here and there. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah. But, um... Uh, the first song I ever released, uh, it was like a, uh, not a similar story. It was just in the sense that I went through heartbreak Mm -hmm. and it was probably the lowest point in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that point you're so low. And I, I, I called myself like the, the two months after the breakup, I I called it like, you know, crazy bet though, because I was just, (laughs) I was just not myself, dude. I'll never forget. Like, Mm -hmm. um, just an example of like what crazy would be. Uh, I remember I, I went into my room and I was like. I need to change this. And I think I started like rearranging stuff at like 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I was moving stuff around and throwing stuff out till like 1 p.m. the next day, mm-hmm. just straight through. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like no sleep. And you know what's funny? I was listening. I, I, I remember this uh, album I was listening to um logic's logic came out with this album with uh because his wife cheated on him Mm -hmm. and i just listened to that the whole time (laughs) and i was just in a different mindset but like Mm -hmm. it's crazy the song like like i said like i i played it on my ukulele Mm -hmm. i just played a couple bars and i think i wrote the whole song in like seven minutes you know what i mean or like seven minutes uh the song is called seven days oh okay because the whole concept of the song was um uh, it was the seventh day mm-hmm. after the breakup and I woke up and I had this this crazy dream yeah. like of just like us and I was just like fuck and I was just like fucked up at the time. I also like was learning things at that time about like, you know, the dirtiness and trying to, trying to write it in a way where it's just like, you know, I don't want to call you out, but like this is how I feel. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. fuck, you know, so I definitely get that. I definitely get that, dude. So th- that kind of music kind of resonates with you when you're going through that? Like I feel yeah. like I, when I hear that kind of stuff, when I'm, if I go, you know, break up or whatever, like, I don't want to hear breakup kind of music. I want to hear, like, happy music and, like, all that shit just makes me, like, more and more. Or, or like, how does it feel like you just, is, like, misery likes company kind of thing? <sighs> I'm a little bit complicated. It's a little bit of both, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like, like I said, within those two months, at least those two months of there, mm-hmm. you know, where I was going through, like, a crazy phase. I don't know if you went through a crazy phase as well. I think so. Like it. Yeah. You know, like, I was so bipolar, mm-hmm. you know, that, like, I, yeah, like, I, I wanted misery songs, but then at the same time, I was like, nah, you know, I'm better, you know, like, <laughs> fuck her, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm doing so much better, I'm gonna listen to the best songs ever, and I'm listening to, like, Party Kanye, songs. Yeah. you know, like, uh, Black Skin Head, you know, da 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 yeah. I'm, like, doing 90 down high, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it, bro, like, she doesn't even know what she missed, you yeah. know? Um, but I think now, like, after the fact, mm-hmm. I do like it, you know, I like, I like a, um, Frank Ocean, you know, like, oh man, yeah. I'll, I'll get into some. I'll be your boyfriend. Mm. And, you're, and I'll be like, damn, you know, and I'm, I'll start crying, listen mm. to some Adele, you know what I mean? And yeah. just like, get, I, I love reliving it, but almost like as a sweet memory. I Because at the end of the it. day, we're human, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it's funny. How long ago did you write that song? Um, I think like three years ago word looking back at it do you feel like it's aged well are you still proud of it or you kind of look back at it and you're like "Uh, a little cringy or like you know how do you feel about it i'm still super proud of it fuck yeah fuck (laughs) you know like i hear it and i'm like dude this is still one of my best songs like i still i felt that way in 2020 i feel that way now like yeah sick dude yeah Mm -hmm. because i I feel the same way I i look back at my song too and i'm like Listen, I was like, you know, I was in a different headspace. I was going through shit. And mm-hmm. it's it's funny. I feel like especially... Wait, how old are you, by the way? 
Uh, I'm from the nineties. Oh, all right, blah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. It's cool, bro. It's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Cause like I feel like especially like in your twenties and stuff, mm. like you. It's almost like every year you could almost like look back at yourself like one, two years ago and you, you almost look at yourself like, oh, I was a kid then, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm 24 and I look back when I was like 19 mm-hmm. and I thought I was the shit. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I was just a kid back then, man. Yeah. And now I'm about to be in like my mid 20s and I'm just like, you know, I, I even look back on to when I was 22 or 21, you know what I mean? And yeah. like, I was like, damn, like. Who, who let me start drinking at 21, bro? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't even in the right headspace for that, bro. Like, this I feel crazy. Like, I feel like growth is, like, it's so constant that, you know, at 45, you're going to look at your 35-year-old 35 35 self and be like, what an idiot. <laughs> you know, like, that's yeah. how I'm going to feel, too. You know, like, that's how I think I feel now with, like, my younger self. And I, every time I think about whatever age I'm at minus, like, three years at that time i'll still think like what an idiot <laughs> like well why'd you do that dude like i don't know word, word, word. yeah <laughs> so, talk, so talk to me a little bit about your, your your music process like what is it like for you writing a song um it's i don't like to be with anyone at all like i know a lot of people like having their friends or whatever like in the studio like i don't like anyone in the studio i just listen to i think the beat like how it you know the beat speaks to me still every like most of the time most of the time i'll put on the beat and that is what will drive my writing. So I'll just put on the beat, uh, put on the record record. Yeah. Record. And then just like, whatever melody comes out, whether it's like nonsense, I'll just like, I'll let that flow. I'll let that record. And I'll do that like three, four times. Cause I know like that whole take is not going to be perfect. So I'll do it like three, four times and I'll just choose the melody parts and whatever words that kind of came with it. I kind of know that's the subject of the song. Cause you know, like, it, like, I felt that way and if it's felt if it's so well on the beat and that really that beat like portrays it to me, that's what I'm gonna use. That's what I'm gonna talk about. And then I kinda use that and then, you know, just extrapolate from that and write the rest of the song. Word. Word. And so how is it like when you're in the studio? Like do you do you are you also very private in the studio as well or Yeah, well that's what I was saying, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, um, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know you were like talking about just like, sorry, I was picturing like you just in your room for a second. I was oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that's where I do most of my writing in the Word, studio. In the studio. Yeah, yeah, so I'll just like, I'll leave the beat on in the studio and like the mic will be next to me. So that's where I'll be able to record right away. And then I used to like write, you know, like in, I don't know, college and stuff like that. I would write um, just in the notebook and I would ha- like, I would know the beat or maybe I would have the beat playing next to me and like I would just write, but. I don't know. It's it's so much different actually delivering it at the same time, you know, like rather than just writing it, be like, oh, this will sound good rather than, oh, this sounds good because I just heard myself say it. It sounds good because half the time I'll write something and then I'll put it on the mic and I'll be like, damn, this sounds really bad, like compared to what I thought it would be. Um, so I, most of the time it's always like live in the studio. That's where I'll write right there. Word. No, that's that's sweet. Cause sometimes when you get that like, you know, that fire and energy to like just go to the mic. Yeah. You, you know, you talked about do you freestyle at all or Yeah, I mean I, I used to freestyle a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um It's hard. I, uh, it's yeah. hard. I would never make you do anything here, bro. I, like, <laughs> I, I thought about it. Like you said I prep a verse, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's but. tough because like I get it, because you know, I feel like for a rapper, it's kind of like similar to a singer where it's like somebody like you tell somebody what you do. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, I'll go to somebody and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I sing. And they're like, oh, sing for me right now. <laughs> and I'm just like, damn, acapella. Yo, like we yeah. in a Walmart right now. Like, relax. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, That's like a comedian. Dude. I hate when th- people tell like comedians, oh, uh-huh. like tell, make me laugh. Yeah, make me I'm laugh. just like, yo, shut <laughs> up. Like, he's not trying to make you laugh right now, man. Like, he's like exactly in Walmart getting like his groceries. Mm-hmm. Leave him alone. <laughs> but yeah, I think. um, uh. Fuck, I was going to say something. You were talking about, like, freestyling and stuff? Yeah, dude, I used to freestyle, like, a lot. And, like, I would, like, almost bug my friends because every time we would, like, drink or, like, just chill or whatever, I'd be like, yo, let's freestyle, throw on the beat, throw on the beat. Mm-hmm. And then, like, half the time they would kind of look at me like, you know you're the only person who knows how to rap. Like, shut up. And then... <laughs> and then <laughs> dude, that's me and my friends, bro. Like, every yeah. time I'm in the car, I'm like, yo, guys, let's put on a beat. And, I, and yeah. even if people can't rap, bro, I'd be like, yo anybody can rap just say whatever yeah. doesn't even have to rhyme just talk to me yeah <laughs> but do it do it in beat though <laughs> i know yeah i tell them to do it too and it's like no dude we don't rap like but some of my friends will be like all right yeah, let's go and then we'll all go for it and like half, mm. sometimes they'll be better than me and i'll just be like yo like 
good shit. So, yeah. Yo, you know what's funny? <laughs> I don't know if you've experienced this as well. Mm-hmm. This might just be a me and my friends thing. But no, I, I know there's there's other people who do this too. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's so easy to mm-hmm. like say fruity shit when you rap. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like the <laughs> easiest shit, bro. Like, I don't know why. Like, yeah. Like, any word like dick butt or like you know like mm. it's just easy to rap and like it's so funny like I, my friends will be doing it and yeah. it's like i think of, um even like uh you ever see that video of tyler the creator when mm. he i think he oh was with in, funk flex yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he just starts going in and i was like yo yeah, flex is like, <laughs> like <laughs> you talking about me <laughs> <laughs> that's just great uh yeah it's actually funny i actually um I think it's, I think all that, all that type of stuff is hilarious. There's just actually one SoundCloud rapper, um, and he would take popular songs mm-hmm. and turn them into just like mad fruity songs. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, it, was, it was hilarious. I forget he had um he he changed some um what's his name Travis Scott songs into like I feel like I've heard him on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. And you know what's <laughs> funny? I have one that I made. Yeah, um, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, I'll show you off camera. I'll show you okay, off camera. Okay, got you. Yeah. But um, it, it was to any anime's um, um, what was it? And then I get the bag. So I'm uh, she got some ass. Bring it in. So I'm the dude. CNN. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that song. I forget what what the name of that song is. But uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I changed all the lyrics to that song, and it was actually my boy Winter Break, who I've had on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. He texted me one day, and he was oh, his showing name me, is Winter Break. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, he was showing me all of um, like all this guys like SoundCloud rest, and he's like, "Is this shit funny?" I'm mm-hmm. like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yo, you won't make one." Yeah. And I was like, "Damn, challenge accepted, dude." So I'll definitely have to show you after this. It's, Word, it's in like that. a hidden Dropbox somewhere. Okay, for okay. all you hackers when trying to get in my yeah. files and shit. So yeah, dude. Ten so, passcodes on. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> At one point, I'm gonna have to release it, but maybe under like a, a pseudo name or something, maybe like a, yeah. a, a secret name or whatever. We'll see how we'll see. it does. It blows up. Like, yeah. all right, it was. Oh me. yeah, yeah, it was me. It was me. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not gay, but like, you know. You know what it is too. I think that like because humor kind of um. You know, I remember being on stage with a lot of open mics when I was in the city. Mm -hmm. And every time I would, like, introduce myself or go to a next song or get, like, a little uncomfortable on stage, I would just, like, try to make a joke. And, you know, my boy who came with me, like, a lot of the time, he'd be like, yo, don't do that. Like, you're doing that to cover up, you know? Like, you're trying to say something serious and now you're joking about it. Like, take this seriously. And I was like, damn, like, I am doing it because I probably am uncomfortable. And, like, I think that's the same thing with people who freestyle. Mm. They're like, oh, shit, you know what? I don't know what to say. Let me say it. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And then they say some fruity stuff. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a great segue. So talk to me a little bit about, like, you performing. Like, how many times have you performed? Are you still performing regularly? Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I mean, I've done mad open mics, whether it's Jersey, Philly, New York. Um, I've performed, like, a handful of shows, too. Um, probably, like, I want to say, 10 or something like that 10 actual like my name on the flyer like nitty beast performing kind of thing like not an open mic um you know and i have i have another show on the 26th in jersey um in garwood new jersey at crossroads so hit the dm or link in bio in instagram um but probably like yeah probably 10 and then i'm trying to at least have my own performance several times a year because otherwise I'll do open mics, but I feel like I have figured out how to have my own shows and I've gotten to the level where I'm comfortable and I've, I, in a way, know enough people, whether it's artists or venues or whatever, like I can, I can try to make that happen more frequently than I used to be able to. So definitely the goal is to continue performing a couple times a year, but um, I used to do open mics like every week or a couple times a week, especially when I was, on, when I was in the city. Word, word. Have you ever thought about getting a, a, a manager? I don't know if I necessarily need one yet. I think I want to, you know, and I, I think it's it's always cool to be like, oh, yo, my manager. You know, like it's always the cool points too, but you don't, you know, you don't necessarily always need one. I feel like especially if you can handle everything or if you have, you know, my team consists of like my videographer, my mixing engineer, and I pay them as it goes. I pay them whenever I, you know, I'm getting a video done or a song done or whatever. And like, if I have people on my team, then, and I can control the rest. If I, if I'm good with my social media, if I'm making the music, if I'm doing whatever, I don't think I necessarily need one yet. Um, but I also feel like the time will come where, you know, 
my name will be big, be big enough that managers will reach out to me, ideally. You know, they'll be like, yo, you know, this is doing super well. Do you need a manager? Well, I think I think even even more of like a, a smaller time manager would serve you well. Actually, if you ever get the time, I did a podcast in season two uh, with a girl. Her name is Sam Dion, and she runs her own management, a smaller management company. Mm-hmm. It's called Dion Management. And uh, she signed... She has, I think, three artists right now or four artists. Mm. And basically, she just talks about how she's just, like, helping with networking, you know, like, doing, uh, having the venue set up. And she was talking about, like, you know, when you have an artist and what she looks for an artist before she signs them is just how organized they are themselves. And it's actually surprising. She wouldn't necessarily do as much as you think, like, a regular manager. I wouldn't even say a regular manager, but, like, when you're talking, like, huge A&R labels, um their managers are doing like crazy stuff and they have crazy connects and and you're paying them based off their connects Mm -hmm. and it's almost like when you have a smaller business like like sam like she could just help you with like certain stuff i think it's better to talk to her because it's funny i actually linked her up with one of my boys who i used to be in a band with and his name is tristan Mm -hmm. and hopefully he'll be coming out with some music sometime soon (laughs) he's always on like a journey and stuff like that but he he has some great music as well but um yeah dude i would i would definitely like suggest like kind of looking into like the smaller time managers because i Mm -hmm. think that's what's missing biggest in jersey and i'm kind of gonna shift the conversation this way because hip-hop rap any type of like artist in in that genre is super hard to like make it in jersey Mm -hmm. especially if you're not like you know co doing shows in new york where you get like a bigger you get bigger crowds you could get more people who are into hip-hop and uh you know you're talking about like um performing at crossroads right Mm -hmm. but how many other venues are there in new jersey that you could perform at regularly yeah it's definitely difficult with hip-hop um i think even when i talk to a lot of venues they're kind of like you know, you know, shout out to Crossroads for giving me a shot, but like a lot of people were just like, we're not really used to hip hop acts, yeah. you know, it's all guitars, it's all, um, bands, it's all stuff like that. And I mean, I don't think they're, I think they're just, they're business, right? So if they think a hip hop act is not going to bring people in, not going to bring money in, or they don't know if it will, they're not going to take the gamble. But I think that, you know, people who kind of, um, I don't know what you call it. Push the border, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push the limit. I don't know. Like you, like make a make an imprint and like kind of get a couple shows down and get couple a couple venues that are comfortable with it. I think that slowly, slowly it'll build. It'll be like, oh, okay, these two venues down the street did it. They did well. Now that he wants to do a show here. All right, let's give it a shot. He did well over there. Let's try it over here. And now all three venues are cool with hip hop acts. And then he tries the fourth venue, or other people will be like, oh. My boy did a couple shows. They're all hip-hop acts over there. Let me do a hip-hop show here. They're like, oh, it worked? All right, fine. Let me give you a chance. So I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, the resume starts building up in Jersey. Be like, oh, a lot of people do hip-hop acts at every venue. And so it's almost like a, a normal thing, you know? And everyone just gets comfortable with it. Venues get comfortable with it. And it starts to grow that way. No, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I always think it's, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you basically, like, set the basic building blocks of how to get it even bigger you Mm -hmm. know i just feel like there's just not enough love in jersey and even for artists who are you know a little bit even more on their way and 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 i think uh when you're talking about that like i think there's this one artist called ivy j she signed under like fetty wops label and like you know i'm looking at the the pioneers Mm -hmm. of like you know like you're you're, the people who are older than us you know who are supposed to set the building blocks of like you know what's growing in jersey and i just felt like there there was none there you know Mm -hmm. and there there is some cool up-and-coming um some some instagram accounts that i see that are that are bringing more of the jer- like a jersey culture behind it you know what i mean being proud being proud from jersey and being you know like uh, like proud to be a hip-hop artist from jersey you know because i you don't see too much too much of that you know when mm-hmm. you talk about hip-hop in jersey or rappers from jersey who is the only person you think about you know fetty Wap. <laughs> yeah baby like, yeah you know, like, fuck. <laughs> like you know like yeah dude like i love fetty Wap too yeah but that was summer of fucking when you know like, yeah i know like uh, yeah like i'll get turned to his one two songs and at coachella and stuff mm-hmm. when was the last time he made a hit <laughs> You know? Yeah, I got love yeah. for Fetty Wap. I got love for Patterson, bro, because I was born in Patterson. Mm-hmm. Whole Peruvian communities in Patterson, bro. I got I got hella love for them, and I I got boys from Patterson too, and it's great. But just yeah. fuck, man. I, I just wish there was like you know a bigger push. But with that being said, I think shout out Fetty Wap by the way. Yeah, shout out Fetty Wap. <laughs> I yeah. think there is a 
if any generation is going to change what happens and set the foundation for more people growing in Jersey, I have never in my life have seen so much talent from Jersey from the ages from like 19 to like end, end of their 20s, bro. I've mm. never seen it before. And I and I'll show you after my office I just have like a list of the list of people who are trying to make it and stuff. Um and I think a part of that and building that foundation is a lot of collaboration. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about collaboration with other artists? Have you collaborated with other artists? Um yeah, we'll go on with that question. Yeah, I mean I, I definitely agree. I think like I was talking to um someone about this recently and he was telling me how you know, it's really good to have a partner in business and because, you know, he came out, um, he went for vacation for like a month and he was like, listen, like I'm here on vacation for a month and my partner is taking care of the business back home. And next time he wants to do it, same thing. It's like, it's good to work with people because in a way they kind of have your back and the business never stops. And like, I never really... I, I never heard someone say something like that, like the business should never stop running. Mm. And, you know, it seems so obvious, but I just never heard someone put it that way. And I was like, wow, that's true. You know, and music, I think like, I was like, well, how does that apply to me? And I was thinking in my head, I was like, how would that apply to me? I'm like, oh, well, my partners at this time could be everybody I work with, right? So if I collab with a bunch of people, then if I'm not posting on social media for two, three days, those songs are coming out. And people are still coming to my page because the people I collab with are still going to come to my page. And then later on, when I post it, my people will go to his page, right? And it's like the business is always running. Like people are still coming to your page. People are still listening to your music because you're working with so many people that they're almost, you're working with each other and you're working for each other at the same time. Word. Yeah. Word. Yeah. I, I think I think that's a, that's a fantastic point. And I think it's keeping that momentum right mm-hmm. it's keeping that momentum make sure that momentum doesn't stop and it's it's and it's really really hard because sometimes dude like do you ever get that social media burnout from like running your business and, and stuff and if you do how do you deal with it dude so much yeah and like i think i just realized that you know it's it's big it's the dream is always the biggest goal the dream is always the bigger picture and you can't lose sight of that and it's you know you might get burned out or whatever but if you know you're going to get burned out which i have it's like, okay, so plan ahead, you know, like, especially since I've heard, you know, this whole business never stops running thing. I feel like I've, I've applied that in the past without knowing that, but it's kind of like, all right, I'm, I'm going to California for two days. Let me make sure I have all my posts set up. Let me make sure everything so that I can enjoy there and, and not have to worry about shit while I'm in California, but I'll still be able to post and all that stuff. And you take care of that stuff in advance. And I think that's how I try my best to deal with stuff because I've definitely gotten burned out. I've definitely just thrown my phone on my bed, on my ground. I'm like, just like, dude, what are you doing? Like, fucking take a break. And sometimes you just can't because you know you have to keep, you need, you know you need to post, you know. And even if you're you're not posting, you're like, shit, dude. Like, I'm missing out right now. Like, my, my followers aren't going to fuck with me anymore. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going slower in the race right now. Fuck. And so it hurts. And you're just like, dude. In order to take care of that, how I do at least is, you know, try to plan ahead and I just have all my posts ready or make sure I have a song or two already ready. So there's no pressure of doing a song because I already have something in the bank. Um, that's that's my like way around it. Word for sure. And <clears throat> being on social media and especially, you know, being an, being an artist on social media, man. You got some fucking haters out there, man. <laughs> have you have yeah. you have you received like any like hate on your music or like you know people just like fucking around with you? And if you have, like, how do you deal with that? I don't. I mean, like, knock on wood, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get that much hate, and or at least I haven't seen it. I've seen some for sure, and I know people are hating behind the scenes, but like that's it's not to my face. But even when I do see it, it doesn't it doesn't really affect me that much. It's almost like it gives me almost like motivation and it hits me that way. And it's, you know, like, oh, your music sucks or whatever. Like, all right, like I'm going to make a song so good that you can't ever say that. But like if someone continues to like hate and hate and hate, I've, I've heard this on interviews and I've found it to be true. You know, they never liked you in the first place and they probably won't ever like you. So like you can't make everyone happy. And I think that's like something to 
definitely internalized for like every artist. It's, you can't make everyone happy and you know, you do your best, you be honest and true to yourself and whoever fucks with you does, you'll see that. And you just take the hate as motivation, you know? No, yeah, no, I, I definitely get that, you know. I'll never forget, um, you know, I was talking to you about that uh, that song before that I wrote with the breakup. Yeah. There was a promo video that I shot. Um, I just had to come out with a, out, out of a Devil's Game in Newark, right? Mm. And uh, I was looking at the shot. You know, sometimes, you know, creative, you think about something, you're like, cool, yeah. let's shoot it. You know what I mean? You have an iPhone, fuck it. Yeah. So I'll never forget, uh, we were at like, um, uh, what's it called? Like, um a crosswalk right mm-hmm. and there was like a pole there so i was like all right the, here's the idea I'll, I'll paint it in your head for you mm. you're gonna see you're gonna see this pole and you see like the moving cars right so you have some motion in, in the shot so it's, it's kind of cool and this pole is kind of like awkwardly like to the right side and so i was gonna walk and slap my sticker across it right slap my sticker on it i keep walking zoom pants into the sticker boom like you know mm. seven days right that, that that was a song right so then it, it cut into seven days and i was like that's gonna be cool bro i'm gonna put it up so we filmed it recorded it came out exactly how i wanted to great mm-hmm. posted it up and this was the first time i ever used the uh, instagram uh promotion like the where you oh, pay boost? you pay like for the boost and stuff yeah yeah so i paid for the boost and i paid for it like you know in the north jersey area and stuff and i was like yeah yeah i'm the shit you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah it was like the first it was the first thing i ever wrote so you yeah, know yeah. like or like the first thing i ever like really released by myself so i was like yeah i'm the shit mm-hmm. so i really it i'll never forget it this one kid commented down below and he was like yo he's like i'm from newark if i ever see you around putting your bullshit stickers i'm gonna beat the fuck out of you and I, was like, <laughs> 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 I was like yo this is great i was actually so happy though yeah i was so happy because i was like yo someone took the time out of their day mm-hmm. to tell me some bullshit yeah and i was like if that means that means i can make people react i can make people feel you know yeah. you and made that, someone care yeah that yeah I, and it was also like for me that was like the first time like honestly i'm not even gonna hold you like i felt like a celebrity yeah and i was like yo this <laughs> man he's wild bro this is great because like, you don't even know that person yeah i don't even yeah. know that person <laughs> i still blocked and reported it <laughs> <laughs> Low key, I felt unsafe. I was like, "Yo, maybe I'm not gonna walk by the Prudential Center yeah. today again the next time any soon." You know, yeah. but like, yeah, no, it it was great. It was it was great, and I think um, it's still weird. I'm still kind of figuring out the internet myself, and like trying mm. to be as authentic as I can. And I think that's the whole reason with this podcast as well. Yeah, because you know, I I always find um, and I've said it on the podcast plenty of times. I give people about thirty minutes, um buffer time in between where i could feel like they could be fake you know what i mean right after you hit like the 30 minute mark and you know once we get into more comfortable questions we're laughing we're chilling yeah like you can't it's kind of hard to like you know keep acting like a certain persona or a certain person unless you're a professional actor then shit i guess you could do it for like however fucking long you want you Mm -hmm. know yeah but at this point i mean like my audience definitely knows who the fuck i am you Mm -hmm. know and I, i think the whole point is you know trying to get to know you a little bit more but with that being said besides music because we've basically been talking about that Mm -hmm. what do you do outside like you know like when 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 you're not like you know online being like you know nitty you know what i mean what what are you doing i mean so i do have the pharmacy gig so there's that um i started like the last couple months trying to get into skateboarding sick yeah so i i always wanted to do it when i was a kid and i did for a while but i think the first time i got a real board which is like you know the difference in like a real board and like those like ten dollar Kmart boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I got like a real board and I was so hype. And then um, I like went down my driveway, and immediately broke my wrist. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So I think like I I took a break <laughs> after that for a <laughs> while, and then um, I don't know. I just like I never really picked it back up. And I think every couple years I would try to pick it up for a little bit. Um. So maybe this is one of those years, but I really do want to get into it. I think like after doing music for so long, I understand, you know, I understand if you want to get good at something, you need to put time in. Yep. You know, and I don't think I really got that when I was a kid. And that's, that's probably why I didn't pursue music early on either. But I think that with skateboarding, it was the same case. And it was every time I uh, try to get onto skateboarding or try to start doing skateboarding, I couldn't, um, I just didn't put the time in. I didn't, I didn't continue with it. I'll do it for a couple of days and then maybe try it in like a couple of weeks again. And you know, you don't, you have to be consistent in order to get better. Um, so I think now that I've learned that through music and learned like how to get good at something, 
that's what I'm trying to apply to skateboarding and like get good at that, you know? Yeah, no, I, de- I definitely get that. Dude, fuck, you broke your fucking wrist. That's, Dude, that's yeah. kind of hilarious. How long ago was that? <laughs> I mean, it was third grade, so third. it was mad long ago. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I just, ah, dude, it was so stupid. I just remember as soon as I fell, I was like, fuck, man, this is the first day. I just got this <laughs> board, dude. Like, I was so hyped for it, and I just broke my wrist day one. I'm looking at this skateboard, basically brand new. With this gigantic cast around my arm, and I'm like, man, <laughs> like, and then I don't, you know, that's what probably gave me that break, and I'm like, damn, man, I never picked it back up. So picking back up skateboarding more recently, like, are you trying to do like tricks and like skate through the streets, or is it like, because there's also longboarding, and longboarding's kind of fun. Oh, I did do longboarding for a couple of years. Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah, I still do longboarding every now and then. It's just like it's you know you don't do any tricks, so it's easy. Yeah, and like because I already knew how to skateboard, I knew how to get on the board and move around and stuff. So that stuff. That came pretty easy to me, Word. but so every now and then I'll still take my longboard places and go around. It's a lot of fun, but I always wanted to do like a kickflip or a grind mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I always wanted to make my board look like so beat up, you know, like because of the work I put into it. And I just, you know, I'm never trying to be, I'm not trying to be a pro skater. I just want to be good enough to, you know, make myself happy. I'll be like, all right, you know, like I, I go around doing tricks, go and just, you know, that would be satisfaction for me. Word, word, word. Mm-hmm. And do you, so do you do anything else besides skate? Because actually, no, real quick, have you ever been to Cali? Yeah, a couple times. Word, because yeah. the skateboarding culture out there is wild. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's sick. It's sick out there. So mm-hmm. actually, funny enough, so do you do a lot of traveling in the United States at all? Yeah, I think I've traveled a good amount in the U.S., um, like Cali, Florida, a lot of the Northeast states, like Vermont, Boston, um, and then like Chicago and yeah, I think so. <laughs> so have you ever tried to perform in any of these places? Nah, not really. I mean, like Philly, Jer- I mean, New York, Philly and Jersey are mostly where I perform. I'm thinking if I ever performed anywhere else. Um, no, nah, I never really tried, but I guess like, I don't know. I, I always, I think I get discouraged because I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to do an open mic there. Is it going to be worth it? I'm on va- like, I'm on vacation. I don't know. Like that, I guess that that doesn't sound too good, but that's really what I think. <laughs> I think that's how I feel sometimes, and I'm just like, I don't know if it'll be worth it. And on top of that, I came here to like take a break from music or whatever. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be, you know, doing both at the same time. Yeah, because you know, I always think um, if you ever take if you ever take a trip out to Cali, like specifically, like like for like you know your music and trying to network, bro. Yeah, it's one of the greatest things, man. Because out there, like. You, know, you meet so many different people you know i got I actually got some connections out in arizona too yeah um tyreek lonely leonard uh they're both two like oh, i think artists. i know lonely leonard yeah lonely's cool Lon- yeah, yeah. Lon- Lon- lonely's a cool kid man i i, I mm-hmm. love him he was actually on the podcast i think he was actually i think it was the first episode this season oh really no no no. he was the third episode this season and he was actually the first person to do an interview like in the studio like when we were just mm-hmm. getting started wait what season is this this is season three Okay. Season three. The yeah, other yeah. two, was that a different studio or was it virtual? Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh, season one was basically like my house mm-hmm. uh, and my bedroom. And I didn't really have guests on. It was like a completely different vibe. Yeah. Like we, we had like five segments. It was like um, uh, community, sports, pop, music. Um, and then our, our, our topic of the day that we would that we would talk about. Uh-huh. Um and then uh season two i was um i don't want to say illegally i mean i wasn't i don't know if i was allowed to or not but uh i when i graduated college you know you have those study rooms and stuff Mm -hmm. they had just renovated this building yeah and they didn't have any security for the building (laughs) so you went in the building and did so i would i would (laughs) i would grab i had a luggage case yeah i'd put all my equipment in there Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like this before like you know i was using like some lights i bought off of amazon that were like 60 bucks you know and just Mm -hmm. showing up three hours before two hours before the podcast because i would have to look for a room that was open yeah and like you know like i couldn't kick a student out and be like you know fuck like i, I need this room you know <laughs> yeah and then uh it, it was mad nerve-wracking because it, it would take a whole process you know it was like yeah it, it, it was it was was that every week how often were you doing that that i was trying to do it every week but like it was hard and it, i was just learning about editing mm-hmm. and sometimes my camera would overheat and uh you know uh, i was just learning how to mix everything in here and like get my equipment together the mics were kind of rough 
stuff, you know, and, and then trying to convince people to come on the podcast uh-huh. was tough because it was like, you know, oh, meet me at William Patterson. You yeah. know, and then it, they were just like, oh, in the university. And then the parking lot and where we were filmed was so hard to get to. And I feel like people get lost mm. in all these college campuses. Yeah. So I'd make people a map. And then on top of that, Will you like draw him a map? Uh, yeah, I, would, I draw them. <laughs> I, I took a screenshot of like on Google Maps. Yeah, and then I used the the marker on like the editing part in the photo app. Yeah, like to just like draw like oh you walk <laughs> here right. Yeah, and at like at the end of when we started filming, uh, stopped filming there. Like it it ended up getting easier, mm-hmm. but it would just be me right. Mm-hmm. So. Sometimes I'd have to leave all my equipment in this room on a college campus uh, just to walk five minutes, six minutes away to go pick this person up and just hope no one fucks with my shit. You did know? anything ever bad happen? No, but I had this one guest that I'll leave nameless. Mm-hmm. But um, I had this one guest who was like, um, we had just finished doing our podcast mm-hmm. and he was like, hey, you mind if I, uh, if I roll up real quick? And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. And, you know, I thought he was just going to, like, you know, take out, like, you know, a little bit of weed and, you know, start rolling it up, whatever. Yeah. He takes off his, um, what's it called? Uh, the like the, the fanny pack, yeah, the, the shoulder the shoulder bag. Uh-huh. Takes it out. He puts it on the table, opens it up, and just takes, like, maybe, like, half an ounce, mm-hmm. like, an oh ounce of God. weed, <laughs> and just puts it on the table. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, yo, bro, like... <laughs> Like, yo, if this is the one day security comes in this bitch, bro, we are fucked. And this was yeah. before, like, weed was, like, legal, right? Mm-hmm. And even in any college, like, you can't, can't <laughs> fucking weed, like bro. that, dude, yeah. <laughs> so then he's just, he's just like, I was like, I was like, so how'd you like the podcast? He's like, yeah, it was good, man. It was, it was good. Like, I had a good time. And I was like, yeah. oh, fuck. I was like, yeah, that was that was the only thing that happened that, like, bad that happened. But besides that, like... um, And that's how we got the name A.O. Chill. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you. I've, I've said the story so many times oh, before bad. on the podcast. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you after how we came up with the name. Got you. Or actually, no, I think um, on uh, this guy named Sully Bop. I know Sully. Bro, Sully's lit, bro. I yeah, love yeah, Sully yeah. Death, man. He's actually, cool. he actually just posted up a video of us us today, like our podcast. We we filmed the podcast together. Yeah, he and did it, it here, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, he did a podcast here, and then I was actually on his podcast as nice. well. His, okay, okay. Our podcast, yeah, uh, our podcast came out like a week ago, but like we just didn't get like he he got COVID and like you know promotion got all messed up. But today he posted up his first vi- like our first clip from it. Yeah, and he's sick, man. I love Sully. Look, Sully's the goat, man. <laughs> Sorry, I always Sully, him, man. Yeah, I always tell him I'm like, dude. I was like, you're. Yeah, like I have so much respect for him. I'm always like, dude, you're the number one podcast in Jersey. I'll be the number two. I was like, whenever you decide, because he has plans to maybe move away from Jersey. I'm like, if you move away from Jersey, I'll keep the throne clean. You know what <laughs> I mean? I'll keep I'll keep the throne warm until like you know you decide to come back or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, man, Sully, Sully, Sully is Sully's great, man. Sully's great. So, um, we're actually coming a little bit close to the end of the podcast, but uh, two things. One, is there anything that you wanted to talk about that I didn't get to or anything that's on your mind that you want to get on your chest? Um, No, probably just promo stuff. I don't know if that was the second question. No, 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 <laughs> we're, we're, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, uh, I have a couple questions left. Mm-hmm. The first one being, being an artist, and we kind of touched this on, on, on before, a little bit before, but being an artist, like I said, you have moments in your career where you're like, fuck, I don't know if this is going to work out or damn, should I still be doing this? If you could remember your lowest moment as an artist where you were really thinking, damn, I'm at a crossroads, what advice would you give yourself? I think, you know, I've, I don't know how to say it, but I I don't think I've really, I've definitely had doubts, but I think of anything else in the world that I would rather do, you know, and I think that this is exactly you know, if I wasn't going to be pursuing music, I, I wouldn't know what else to do. Like nothing else makes me happy. You know what I mean? Like to that degree. And I think that, you know, every time I come back to that, if I ever do have any doubts, I can I come back to that thought. And I think, you know, there's, there's nothing else that would make me as happy as music does, or even pursuing music. I saw this comedian one time and he was talking about he said, you know, the reason I think you should follow your dreams is because you should follow your dreams because you should get there. But even the pursuit of following your dreams will make you just as happy at the end of the day. And I think that's true. You know, I think that's really true. I think like no matter what 
personally to me, I think I'm going to make it. You know, I still think, you know, I, I think I should feel that way and I do feel that way. But say whatever happens in 50 years, if I'm not where I want to be, I'll be like, damn, I really tried and I'll never regret that. And I think that's what kind of always brings me back because it's, you know, I don't want to be that that dude and just being like, damn, I never even tried. And I, I knew, I knew that was the only thing that made me happy. Word. I, Word, dude. I think that's great. I think that's great. I got one more question for you. If you could go back to when you first started rapping, mm-hmm. little old you, and you have him right in front of you, <laughs> little, little nitty, little yeah. nitty, and you could give him any type of advice, what advice would you give him? I think something I'm kind of realizing now, which I should have learned a long time ago, um, which is kind of the journey I'm on, is give up a year of your life to create the rest of your life. I've heard that before, and I'm applying it, but if I would have known that then and and gave up on, you know, girls and drinking and all that stuff and just, like, sacrificed a year of my life to be who I really wanted to be and knew I wanted to be there, I think I would have been 10 steps ahead. I think I would have been so much happier. Um, I would have definitely told myself that. Word, dude. Nitty, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, dude. I've learned so much. Um, Please, let the people know where they can find you, social media, any shout-outs that you want to do. Now is the time. What's up, y'all? It's Nitty B. You can find me at It's Nitty B, N-I-T-S-N-I-T-T-Y-B on all social medias. If you type me in on all the music platforms, it's just Nitty B, N-I-T-T-Y-B. And make sure anybody from Jersey, y'all come to my show June 26th at Crossroads, me, K9, a bunch of other dope artists. Hit my DM or hit the link in my bio for a ticket. I'll see you there. Dude, thank you so much for having me. Dude, thank you for coming on. And guys, y'all already know the biz. Ayo hey, Chill Podcast, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, OnlyFans too. Um, so yeah, dude. Dude, it's been a pleasure. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. Dude, great time. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks so much, bro. I appreciate it.